Good morning. Welcome to the City Hydro Borage Grow Along Day Number One. Today we're going to go over growing borage. Borage is an amazing microgreen. It I much prefer it over sunflower. It it has the same uh, general look as a sunflower, only a much better flavor. It has a sweet cucumber flavor, and the, and the chefs really love it, and my clients really love uh, the flavor of the borage. Um, the return on investment on borage is probably a little bit better than sunflower with all the issues that people have with sunflowers and the prices of the sunflower seeds is skyrocketing. Um, again, when buying seeds, the more you buy, the more you save. So borage comes in several different package sizes, um, the one pound package, the five pound, and the 25 pound. I buy uh, 10 pounds of borage at a time and save quite a bit on my uh, cost of the seed. So first we're going to put the hydro spacers, the new hydro spacers in the tray. And here you can see we already have them placed in the tray. And you can see how they're placed in the tray. They're nicely evenly distributed. We're going to adjust them just a little bit back towards the back a little bit here and giving us that little space right in here. Um, and then I'm going to, as always, sanitize my tray with a little hydrogen peroxide looking for any issues in the tray, any foaming up, any dirt that might be in the tray. Um, it's all about cleanliness, right? It's all about keeping your equipment nice and clean and making sure you don't have any mold, any kind of bacteria growing in the trays. We clean our trays after every use. Um, we take the tray to the, to the client, the client empties it. Even if the client cleans the tray, we bring it back and clean it again. Um, it's just it's just a great practice to have keeping everything very clean. So let's zoom back over here to our uh, coconut pads and our water bath. And so with borage, it's a little bit different on the amount of seeds. So we use about 70 milliliters of seeds for four pads. Again, that's 70 milliliters of seeds for four pads. Now I'm going to go and place them on the coconut fiber and as you can see I'm, I'm placing them pretty sparsely not as dense as our other seeds because the the leaves of the boards get pretty big and so we don't want to crowd them too much and again over here moving them around Some more here we still have a little bit left in the in the in the container here. So we're going to fill it in a little bit. And you don't want the seeds to pile up in one area. You want them spaced out pretty good. So we have a little bit left over. So like I said around 70 milliliters per pad. You want this kind of density. I'm going to zoom in here a little bit and show you how densely the seeds are on the pad so you get a better idea of, of what I'm talking about here. You see how the seeds are pretty sparse on the things here? Some I'm going to move around a little bit, push them around a little bit, give them a little more room to breathe. And, and there you go, you can see it. It's, it's a pretty good density but not as dense as some of the other seeds that we use. Okay. So I'm going to zoom back out here, adjust the camera here. One day I'm going to have to hire a camera guy to run everything for me. All right. So we're zoomed back out, get everything adjusted. And now I'm going to place the, the cocoa pads inside the water bath. Now this water bath is key to getting a good germination. So as I'm placing them in here you can see there's about a quarter inch of water in the bottom of the tray and it's soaking up the, the water pretty good. There was a little bit too much there because I rearranged the table here for the demonstration today but you can see it's starting to soak up the pads pretty good. I'm going to actually tilt it a little bit so as I'm getting some more water down on the other side here. So you can see the pads are, are, are fairly saturated with water. Uh, let me zoom over here and give you a better idea of it. 
You can see how the pads are, are, are pretty soaked up with water. Zoom back out here. Okay. So now I'm going to get these other seeds that are left over and put them in the container. Bring them back those seeds so we don't lose them. You, okay. So now I'm going to place four more pads here on the tray and repeat the process again. Now how long do I let the pads soak in the water there? Well until I get the next pad done. Until I get the next four pads done then I'm going to move those pads from there into here and these into the tray. So again Seeding the pad, not so dense, not as dense, not as dense as sunflower, that's for sure, and not as dense as arugula or, or basil or any of those other ones that we do there. These are a pretty big plant. They they get as big as a sunflower. In fact, the third leaf still has a really nice flavor to it, surprisingly, and the flowers, my gosh, the flowers taste like the the red center of a watermelon. They just have an amazing flavor to them. So I'm going to go ahead and pick these pads up from over here and put them in my tray. Pushing them all the way to the back because they want that opening down in the bottom down here for our watering purposes. Okay, post them up there. Adjust it a little bit. I hope you're all enjoying the grow lungs as much as I am enjoying making them. I'm going to put these. There's still quite a bit of water left in the tray, so I'm going to put these in the thing there. Maybe add a little bit of water after I put the pads in. We'll see how it soaks it up. Um, it's a little bit tilted there towards the back because of the table, so I might have to pour a little bit of water in there. Yeah, it looks like I'm going to have to put a little bit of water in it. Now, I'm going to move this out of the way so I can get this, give you a better shot here. Now, when you're pouring the water and you want to make sure that you don't pour it in too quickly because you're going to create a tsunami, and when you create this tsunami, you're going to wash all your seeds off the pads. So I'm just going to lift up the edge here a little bit and slowly pour my water in, letting the pads get nice and saturated. And as you can see, I like to call that kind of a crystallization. You see the water coming up through the pad and the lights reflecting of it. It kind of gives it a kind of crystallization look. And that's what I like to call a little get a bit of crystallization. That no, that, then you know that you've got enough water in the pan and, this, and the pads are getting nice and saturated with water. Now, while, we, while that pad is soaking in there is normally when I make my label. So I'm going to go ahead and make my label. And our label is pretty straightforward. You know, people kind of chuckle a little bit because I put micro in front of everything, but kind of old habit when we used to grow mini greens and lettuces in here. So it's micro borage. Okay. And then today's date, which is the 12th of May and these seeds, I label where the seeds came from and these seeds came from Johnny's seeds not in Mountain Valley. Mountain Valley has smaller packages of, of uh, borage, Johnny's has a bigger packages of borage and then I'm going to put the restaurant where these are going to and this is going to a restaurant here in town called Bygone down there in the Inner Harbor. So there's my label place it on my tray and labeling is great because then I know where everything's going helps me with inventory and then it also helps with tracking of gap in case anything ever happens and somebody shows up here and wants to know where my trays went to I can tell them where my trays went to so there's a the label on the tray there you can see the label on the tray right there so now I'm going to place these pads in the green tray now you can see I went from left to right so as not to drag these soaking wet pads over the top of the other pads getting huge droplets of water down inside the seed. 
I want everything to germinate properly and so huge droplets of water on the pad sometimes affect the germination in certain areas over germinating and it might even cause rot and mold if the seeds are too wet. So I got the seeds in here. Okay, I'm going to move this out of the way and move the tray over a little bit better so you guys can get a better view of it. So move the tray over here so you can give a better view of it. Okay, so now I'm going to take my hydrogen peroxide. I'm going to spray my seeds with hydrogen peroxide, sanitizing them, checking them out. No noise, no foaming action. Everything looks pretty good in the tray here. So now I'm going to give it a little bit of water. So again, it's that 30 second Earl Shrive paint job that I talk about back and forth back and forth for 30 seconds getting the seeds nice and moist nice and wet back and forth 30 seconds up and down up and down okay and so you're going to do this watering twice you're going to do this watering now and then you're going to do the watering again when you do your watering so i do watering twice on the seeding day so and again, it's a 10 seconds on the lid to get it nice and moist. Okay, you want to create that nice moisture barrier down inside the tray so you get a great germination. Okay, and then it's up on the rack. And then we'll pull it down again this afternoon for a second watering. And then after that, it's one watering a day. We'll see you tomorrow. Everybody have a happy day and happy growing. Thank you so much for your support.